the material selection that we have is not, I don't think it was particularly unique. Um, there, there were other labs and there are other labs that are kind of looking at similar um, material stack. Um, there's kind of a fundamental question um, and, and still needs to be answered around the longevity and reliability of these uh, microelectrodes um, that, that we call, uh, compared to some of the other more conventional neural interfaces, devices that are intracranial, so penetrating the cortex, that are more rigid, um, you know, like the Utah ray, um, that, that are these uh, four by four millimeter kind of silicon shank that have exposed uh, recording site at the end of it. Um, and, and um, you know, that's that's been kind of the innovation from Richard Norman back in 1997. Uh, it's called the Utah Ray because, you know, he was at University of Utah. And what, what does the Utah Ray look like? So it's a rigid type of... Yeah, of so we can actually look it up. <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's a bed of needle. Um, there's... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, go yeah, ahead, I'm so sorry. Th those are rigid, rigid, <laughs> rigid shank. Rigid, um, yeah, you weren't and, kidding. And the size and the number of shanks vary anywhere from 64 to 128. Um, at the very tip of it is an exposed electrode that actually records neural signal. Um, the other thing that's interesting to note is that uh, unlike neural link threads that have recording electrodes that are actually exposed iridium oxide recording sites along the depth, this is only at a single depth. So mm -hmm. these Utah ray spokes can be anywhere between 0.5 millimeters to 1.5 millimeter. And they also have uh, designs that are slanted. Um, so you can have it inserted at different depth. Um, but that's one of the other big differences. And then, uh, I mean, the main key difference is the fact that uh, there's no active electronics. These are just electrodes. And then there's a bundle of a wire that you're seeing. And then that actually then exits the craniectomy. Um, that then has this port that you can connect to um, for any external electronic devices. They are working on a, or have the wireless telemetry device, but it still requires a through the skin uh, port that actually is one of the biggest failure modes for infection uh, for the system.